Hi my friend, it's Pat Sloan here on Friday for our daily video. And first I want to show you the UFO I got done. I got to do the UFO part first part because it's UFO Friday. So I got the binding on my traffic jam. Yay! So excited. So the binding is on. I still have to do the hand work for um, the well, this hanging sleeve and the label. So I'll, at my website, you can see a full picture of the quilt, uh, but without the binding because it's sleeting outside, so I can't go take a picture today. Uh, <laughs> not, not good. Maybe later in the day, if, I, if it stops sleeting, I'll run out and take one in the snow. Well, there's not really snow. It's lots of sleet. But anyways, here is the binding, and ta-da, ta-da, I did it with the blanket stitch and this uh, fabric. I want to show you the thread, how I figured out the thread that I wanted to use. I want to show you that. So let me just set that over here. So come down. Come on down. I have the binding thread here that I picked from. I had options, options, options. So here are my Orfil threads. They're all 50 weight. And now if you just put the thread on top like this, it is hard to pick the right color that you would want because you see much more density, you see much more of the thread than you will when you just have one strand. So you won't really need to put just one strand on here. So that is what I will normally do. I always do actually is take the spools and then take a strand of it and just lay it across to see because you can make a decision. Do you want your uh, binding thread to match as close as possible to these colors? Do you want it to be a little lighter, a little darker? And look at colors that are different. Like this is orange, but that doesn't mean that it wouldn't be interesting. Uh, and like this one is very light. So if you would like a lighter thread showing, I'm doing a blanket stitch. Um, the red is really nice, so it will make your um, blanket stitch stand out a little bit more. But when you put one thread, none of them are particularly strong. It's not like you look at that and go, it's not like black, which would be very strong. So the color I ended up with was this one. So it is very much a um, coral, I guess, a pinky, orangey, reddish thing. Um, 5002 is that color number. So that's what I ended up with for the binding. And I think it turned out really nice. Um, it was exactly how I would hope it would be. That's <laughs> but that's how I audition the threads. Just taking that single strand and laying it across. Okay, today our socialites block. We have to get our socialites block in. And it, let me have, a, have it on the, here we go. It is a traditional log cabin block, and every week when we're doing the socialites, the Fat Quarter Shop has given them all a theme. So we love themes. So the theme for the log cabin block is uh, honor. So I thought that was gorgeous, being that it is a traditional log cabin block. Now, I am doing the nine inch block for the socialites. This, I'm also doing them in Morrison Park with this two fabrics picked for each block instead of doing um, you know multiple colors but because this is a nice big center you could do something really fun with a third fabric in there or mix it up and you could do it really scrappy but today to honor somebody uh, we'll honor somebody in quilting so I want you to share with me when you share your block or share without sharing your block you don't even have to make the block to share this <laughs> but tell me about the person who taught you to quilt and maybe if you like uh, instead you could t tell me about somebody who influenced your quilting somewhere along the way that supported you or showed you something that made you totally change the way you make your quilts. Um, there are quite a few people uh, in the quilt industry that influenced me because when I first started I took a lot of workshops and so I took workshops with Nancy Crow, I took workshops with Fonz and Porter, who later became personal friends of mine. I did work for them. Um, Gwen Marston, I took uh, think classes with her, which helped me develop my applique style. Mimi Dietrich, uh, who showed me what a wonderful teacher should look like in a quilting class. Um, there, then there are just my friends who 
were always so generous, my local friends, always so generous with showing me how to do this or do that when I was first learning. But even later on as you're quilting, you might run into somebody that shows you a style of quilt making that all of a sudden you're like, aha, that's it. That's the style of making quilts that, that really makes my heart sing. So tell me about the person in your life or those, those people. I think it's a great way to honor our quilt making and our tradition of quilt making. So in the quest for home is to get the top row done, I have put the little spacers on. So on our layout pattern, I have got the, the spacers all here and I cut mine out. And what I was doing was, was first of all, I wanted to find for the bigger piece here, something fun. So they're not sewn together yet. <laughs> so I can take it off and show you. So this was a super cute dot that I put in here. Um, when I was making the houses over here, the house is very light. So you can see it had a lot of white on the house and then the how tall am I block was right next to it. So I needed to bring some other colors in over there or like a medium and darker tones of blue over there. Now the dog block is, um, <clears throat> is a little darker. So I know when I start building colors below that for blocks, which you have the layout, so you know, you'll know, you'll see on the layout, uh, I will use more of the white background uh, underneath that so that I can balance the colors out. So at this point, you want to keep looking at your quilt always as you're building blocks and looking for the balance of where the colors are. And for those of you doing really scrappy, um, be sure like if you use red, use it in three places or five places and don't pile them all up in one corner. Be sure you're spreading those colors around your quilt. If you've got a pop of yellow, be sure you've got it three, five, seven different places and not, not in one section because your eye will just go there to see the glob of yellow. You want to pop it all around because then your eye will rotate and odd numbers are what is um, our eye likes to see, our brain. Our brain likes odd numbers. It finds them very beautiful. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> Think about that. Think about that as you're building these. Above there are my um, warmest spot blocks that I'm doing as I'm sewing other things. And so I have another one of those done. I have them all cut out so I can just pick them up and use them to stop and start when I'm doing other patchwork. So that, look at the moons. Oh my God, I just love them. This was in our out of this world uh, sew along. That's one of the fabrics that I use for that. So that. I just, it's great. It is great. I have gotten another one done. I'm using those stripes. Oh, I forgot to show you. This is millennial fabric. Do you see the blue, the navy? This is all my millennial fabric from, I guess they printed them out, put them out in 1999 or maybe 98 before the year 2000. <laughs> I still have some, I kept it. Another little thing that I moved along on was this little guy because I cut it out even though it's after Valentine's and I have two tops of the bows done and then the bottom half started of the bows and then after that is pretty much just make all those hearts that are on there and then this little guy could be done so you know I'm trying to uh, sort of d do multiple things so right now my space has like a lot of projects sitting out like I showed you yesterday on the back of my table I've got different you know little piles of things just like you, right? Just like you. This is a working space. I don't have a fancy spot where I film videos because then you wouldn't see anything. You wouldn't get to see what I'm really working on if I did that. So you're here where I'm really working. Now yesterday I also talked about, I think it was yesterday, <laughs> the cross stitch and I got the heart, the whole heart part, whole heart done. Yeah, the whole section. So cute, so cute. So I want to finish out to here and to here, which I actually get to start the lettering. And then hopefully there'll be some time left in February that I can go pick up a different cross stitch project and do a little work on it. Um, because I started this one late in January and because I, will, I sometimes go for days without doing any cross stitch, um, I didn't move a far, as far along as fast as I wanted to. So now I'm making a commitment for at least 15 minutes a day to do my cross stitch. We'll see. <laughs> <I'll be re> <laughs> I've committed to telling you about it now, so I guess I will be showing you. <laughs> All right, what else do we have? Um, I emailed Estelle, who is the 
person I will be sending the goodie bag to from last Friday. So check your email, Estelle. And she said, the question was what you were learning, what people were learning. Uh, so it was a lot of fun to read what you were learning. Estelle is playing with foundation papers, and so she's having a lot of fun for the, with that. But I said you didn't have to tell me a sewing thing. So people were sharing uh, projects from you know, doing uh, you know Zoom classes with their grandkids to help them, to learning what it would be doing tent camping. You know, so there was this huge wide range, and it was just lovely to read all of the the different things that you are learning about. You are an incredible group of people. Yes, <laughs> you're good. You're really good. Now I did put the Shamrock page up, and so the block okay so you can go download this tomorrow starts shamrock day <laughs> so we have shamrocks for the uh saint some when saint patrick rolls around in march but this one is out there now so you can download the pattern all right my friend <laughs> i feel like i need to finish up like a couple of things like really to like maybe get this one done uh so that i can and then get in the work on the shamrock, you know, so whatever, right? Whatever. Thank you for, thank you for being here every day, Sunday, uh, watching my videos. I hope that you're enjoying it. I love chatting with you each day, talking quilting and a little bit more. Uh, so I love you. I'll see you online.